Howdy, howdy, ho, ho, ho. Before we start with the video, just wanted to say thanks for the recent subscribers as we finally made it past 500. I aim to do more video essays and retrospectives as I can because I genuinely love this format of work. I aim to lead to give you as much insight and perspective as I can on the topic that matters mostly in creativity. Also, I'm in the process of resetting my Patreon and Ko-Fi, so please wait until I have it all completed. So with that out of the way, let's begin. The hardest thing to go through in life is growing up, mostly in a world we think we should be prepared for. I find myself indicative in the present as more and more of our age are feeling relatively burnt out in a world as it is in this day and age, and how we tend to yearn for the simplest days of our youth in a time we all thought was sacred, but just as more bad existed then and then some. But we look forward to in a time of uncertainty. But what does this have to do with what I'm covering? Here goes. Goes. Recess Schools Out is the 2001 animated movie that's a feature film based on the animated Recess series that was popular during its run. I had good times watching this as time went on and still do. Heck, it came out at a time where many animated features had a feature length theatrical film after its run. That started with the Rugrats. Sure, some existed beforehand, but Rugrats popularized it. Akin to anime films based on properties, but that's a whole new story. Now with that out of the way I stated in the prologue, this will have my sentiments exactly as I cover the themes of the film. So let's start. With the conspiracies in full swing, what does one go through to accomplish their goals and why the bitter assessment that is placated with the film's central antagonist? The who, the why, the how is placed squarely on one source. The main school in question, Third Street School, and my oh my what a time it is. It just so happens to be the end of the school year and the most of the iconic characters are in view are getting ready as pivotal changes are put in motion for the end of the school year to end all school years. But what does the plans have in store for our favorite Super Sixers? Yeah, I can't wait to get to baseball camp. Actually, Teach, I'm gonna be out of town too. Please. It's military camp for me. I shall be attending the Mount Van Buren space camp. The Young Voices training program doesn't like the word camp. They provide opportunities for aspiring singers to train their voices in a rigorous yet supportive... Oh boy, oh boy, not so much for our favorite backward cap delinquent TJ Detweiler, who aims to make summer a special one with his friends, with the typical summer vacation to a child's angle. And it really shows a testament towards TJ's character, a man of action who aims to seek adventure at every corner, suddenly halted by his friends preparing for their future endeavors. I think it mostly attunes to the here and now of how we want to grow up fast and when we get to where we need to be. But over time, we tend to be burdened by the complications and look into the past in and of properties that we were fond of back then, recalling towards a relatively easy moment when most of not all professions and livings are being severely undermined by either high costs, layoffs, budget cuts, and a rising use of misuse AI in most professional settings. We earn for the easy and simple moments. We are living these moments now or they yet to come. I detailed that part near the end my ADHD part two retrospective about how the good times are the ones that surprise us as we tend in the moments. Let us continue. As we learn a bit more of the students aside from the group, they also wanted to plan ahead as they feel as if their childhood is fleeting and growing up with dealing with adult life is much more lucrative and tantalizing to say the least. With practically the whole child population in their unnamed town away at camp, leaves lonely, lonely TJ feeling destitute and singularity as the only one not attending camp. Though at a time when one needs as many or at least one friend to have romanticized summer fun with, it can get much tiring and annoying having at least someone to bounce off with, in this case a whole group of friends with differing personalities, to make the days interesting. But alas, fate has played a game with one lone Detweiler, as suspicious affairs are occupying the empty halls of 3rd Street with the staff and students none the wiser. Except for Detweiler. 
though Detweiler as a typical child would seem to have an abhorrent towards his school as he treats it as a second home because of the recess break where the life of a kid means more for its take on outside society and how he takes things to do to a favor and others where he has a place and what will that mean for his own future that he aims to find for himself later on. As the one we follow, we tend to see ourselves in TJ and his troubles, and especially for this trouble as we are seeing for ourselves and then some. What is going on at Dirt Street? In a normal situation, one would chalk it up as hysterical with nothing to prove. But that instance is what gets the ball rolling with the plot with his curiosity filling the blanks. But what is there then need to make a conclusion? Aliens? Monstrous men? Anything seemingly non-human outside the norm? Well, that's what we're finding out. Oh, just scientists. And a seemingly green laser capable of levitation. But what is our boy to do? Could he tell his parents? Nah, too oblivious. The police? Hell no, too incompetent. They say third time is the charm, and that's where we're reintroduced to Prickly enjoying another game of golf. I'll get more into their relationship as characters to himself and Detweiler down the line. But it seems one thing, they have a really rocky exchange in which, which leaves Prickly to have relative distrust and resentment because as an adult, he had to relate to him and detest Detweiler, who respect him one and the same with each contrasting angle that gets to shine upon both of them. But in the initial present, this is what sets the story in motion here. Sometimes I think you were put on this earth just to... <laughs> Boy, that escalated quickly. Taking acquired action, TJ takes his last option. Gathering his friends and his take throughout the series, TJ and the gang tackle many schoolyard adventures. But their most prevalent course of action is problem solving various issues that elicit the other students or at least one person. Either they get into major trouble or prevent bigger trouble. Even on certain cases, that is completely out of hand, but this course is bigger as TJ and his sister travel about at certain locations and moments. We are reacquainted with the six as they are either making headway in their exploits or feeling some sort of level of unsatisfaction overall. But either way, they brought what CJ was selling. But do they believe him? Him? Come on, guys, let's get back to camp. Yeah, see you in a few weeks, T. Understandably so to dismiss and discredit of preconceived selfish motivations, the gang then relented with the revelation that Detweiler was claiming. As it came into a definite surprise, this isn't all that new with them. With a new mystery to unfold, the gang is committed to uncovering the case while being incognito thanks to their fellow campers that show how much of a knit team they are with our heroes. Despite everything, they all act as one in unison, either as a way to save their schoolyard way of life and what they have complete trust with the gang for the benefit of them all. Either way, it's something special. As so, the special talents of the gang are in full effect as we'll get to it later. But for now, a relatively bonding moment is taking place shows more to the development of how things are growing up as a kid and as well as missing some pivotal moments, which speaks to many of us, I'm afraid. As I mentioned in my previous vid, there are so many and few things that I missed. I wondered what would have been like if I fully experienced the things if given the chance. Would things be different or remain the same? There are so many timelines where we all had a chance at one thing but never fully realized it. Could it have been worth it? Possibly, but what of the good that came despite the lapsed chances? Would it be worth erasing what made you, well, you? That's something to think about, you and me. In a series of short days and nights, preferably two days, the next course of action with TJ is the next revelation. Prickly's loose trousers and the double being some sort of subordinate in disguise. But that's enough to blow the case of suspicion and take big action. Of course, they are being underserved by their beady-eyed foil, Randall, uncovering the gang's action and reporting this to a superior, Miss Finster. But what would this lead to a bigger clash? Well, that's the gang infiltrates the Institute in a rather odd time set at night. But further down the rabbit hole goes many plans afoot with the newly discovered tech that lay scattered and laid about in the auditorium sec with a cacophony of angry yelling and demands at the scientists under someone's employ. 
and then we have the reveal of our film's central antagonist, Dr. Fillion Benedict, who is very adamant about his main course of plan being fully executed in this particular location. But the why of the question, as many faults are being exclaimed by the scientists about said location, what is his agenda, and how will that affect the world at large? Well, it's being fully implemented by Benedict, that he's a perfectionist who aims to get things done with very little regard for excuses and failures and teach his subordinates lower than dirt. Sounds like my last employer. It's a close detriment to say the least on how he'll be hoisted up by his own petard, but it's not now. What was that? Someone had better say, excuse me. But what's this? The cat is out of the bag with some circumstances. Our heroes discovered and led to a thrilling chase scene with a boogie surfing soundtrack as a collective chaos ensues. Can it be me? But then again, if one uncovered this conspiracy as big as it is, what would be the matter of dealing with it? Our heroes attempt in their escape with TJ being the last one caught. But this angle of Detweiler being captured and sharing captivity with Prickly paints one of the few dynamics that we'll see over the course of the film. But we'll get this confirmation with the antagonist and the protagonist face to face with bad blood brewing amongst the other gentlemen over the past. As this declaration is present and clear with further details, we are learning about Prickly to Detweiler's surprise with a flashback to the hippie scene of the late 60s and early 70s scene that are littered throughout the movie, which I'll also get through later. On its relatively youthful appearances of the main characters, we'll see how they aim to further change the world in their own way, and we're introduced to the motivations of our villain during his humble beginnings, but what for and what are his courses for doing so? Starting out as a newbie principal, Benedict aims to terminate Recess to further his career of raising test scores up, which is funny since the episode Recess is cancelled further proves that he bugs that experiment. I guess they're exploring this idea on an even grandier scale with receiving heavy pushback and protests as failing attempts were then usurped and later fested his ambitions furthermore with an even bigger wedge level between him and the young Prickly and Benedict with Prickly getting promoted to Benedict's position out of astonishment and surprise as Prickly had no intentions of acquiring her in the first place. It was sort of a happy accident that occurred, but did Prickly really lose someone for how they became? Or was it who they always were in the beginning, just exposed? With the claims of betrayal, that is something to take to account as we all grow to our perspective roles. Some had a sheer happenstance of the like. But what is there to know as our villain had more attempts to terminate recess in a political scale, but was then usurped again? As we're delving further and further to the crux of the second act, the remaining gang inks will cover more infinite mysteries with the help, with the one crate they acquired with the scraps of paper and one integral plan over and over. The date book with one event that claims it, in which we learn of a present event known as Lunar Peregrine. That's where we we'll learn of a present science that existed, a monthly occurrence where the moon gets closer to the earth, resulting in supermoons that happen. Now, I'm no expert in this, as I really love the knowledge of astronomy and aim to learn more. But this is where Gretchen's present concern from space camp comes into play, and learned that moment revolving the satellite means one thing. It's a tractor beam, with Gretchen concluding the details of her own on the plan. But for what reason? And what will that come into play in the meanwhile portion with Prickly and Detweiler escaping towards the Death Stoop Principal's office with a much bigger cause of concern to be revealed and revealed towards Detweiler's group via Walkie Talkie. The end of summer vacation. As I believe this is a destitute to the antagonist's unhinged ambitions to exceed his goals. As this is taken for further extremes, but at what cost? Turns out taken too much extreme with the assistance of Peregrine indeed. We get a full detailing of his plan set in motion by manipulating the moon's orbit and shifting the weather to simulate an arctic apocalypse with the nearsighted goal of keeping students inside and studying of the dreaded consequences that will occur in the little disaster in the making. I guess the code never bothered him anyway. Though Philium is direct, he has severely underestimated TJ's friends to assemble their fellow campmates, schoolmates as reinforcements with the aid of Detweiler's sister, who is now taken to the main cause of thwarting the misdeed by taking action. But what fate awaits our two captured leads? 
In the beginning of the third act, Tactivity is taking a hold of a frantic Detweiler as his frustrations is lobbied against Prickly for not understanding the situation at play because of his age. And to someone such as Detweiler, Summer holds significance towards him. But what about towards someone who isn't as young? Prickly and his impassioned retort stems to debunk Detweiler in a performance such as this as it stems to play with the audience who watched this from the release to the adults of now, 23 years later. With the importance of youthful times of yesteryear and the good times that are latched on with it, leading to Detweiler and Prickly's realization that they're not so different after all as the alliance is forged and the chase is underway. In tandem, the assembled group led by Gus and supported by the gang take in charge in action with their specialties going into play, such as distracting and incapacitating the guards with Mikey, Gretchen shedding the power, go in and so forth with a surprise reunion of Detweiler and the gang with Prickly as their ardent ally against the common foe. The event is underway with little time to spare as the alliances of the children and Pickley converge to the epicenter of the scene to confront this foe and his insightful attempts as the root of his plans is revealed with a swarm of loyal guard that is beck and call to quell any intentional interruptions of this insurrection in an attempt to place the nation's set scores higher and to be in league with the other higher scores of international nations who also have snowy climates that require them to remain inside for study. I heard a stupider attempt of futzing with nature to accredit proper education, and this guy ain't in, as Benedict represents one thing, being an opportunistic dunderhead. He aims to make it out for himself under the disguise of doing this for others, but without the fallout of the attempts he'll create. To him, the ends justify the means without any recourse. But will we learn better to halt his attempts after Detweiler's impassioned retort of still engaging in summer activities during the endless apocalyptic winter? Unlikely as he aims to attempt anyway. But alas, the surprising set of reinforcements led by Fister crashed in with the following teachers ready to take action to save their school and the world from a madman with Peregrim underway. As during the skirmish, Benedict took advantage as Prickly attempts to commandeer him. But was he successful enough to strike him? Yes! To make him slump over and accidentally activate the switch? Oh no. As Benedict took the time to revel in victory against with several nudges towards the moon, but is short-lived by TJ's observation of the devices in question as educated to him the night before, and directs to Vince to aim a mighty throw at the Photon Channeler with an inverse of what Vince was instructed to do back in camp as it comes full circle as the impact fully cancels the super weapon and alas, Third Street School and subsequently the world are safe with a defeated Benedict retreating in failure and ruin as third time was definitely not the charm. My hopes and dreams... Ruined. Ruined! Yeah, well, some people's dreams are other people's nightmares. Sorted and the bad guys arrested as the rest of the scattered crew plus company revel in their actions that are beneficial with a reunion with their families. The recesses gang heroic exploits aren't unnoticed as they pick up the pieces to resume their camp education. Or did they with a decoration of halt camping as their experience taught them that their youth was sacred and aimed to create as much good times as possible with their lives being open and grand to explore when ready down the line. With two weeks left? That was some fast summer, but as clear cut as it can get, TJ aims to recap Prickly about their escapade with a heart to heart on how they learned from one another and Prickly's passion of helping students. Even it dawned on him recently as it took Detweiler to get it. A newfound mutual respect is had with one another during the summer as the school year is a whole other story as Detweiler and Prickly part ways for a limited time of summer with an admiral gaze as a new adventure awaits our heroes as they venture off. That was some ride adult and writing this gave me more insight than I was letting on. The themes of growing up and how it relates to both young and experienced. The series in and of itself was about the societal interpretation of the to the schoolyard as it explores something else entirely. The use of nostalgia as the villain was heavy set in enacting his plans at the place where it all started as driven by impulse to achieve his plan, but undermined by hopeful youth and like minded others to destruct his ambitions as the characters develop. 
So is TJ, with her turning his sister's diary with no hard feelings level towards him as she assisted his friends as the cast learned. It wasn't too late as they figured it to be, and it worked for adults as well in a bind. But based on the situation of their efforts, growing up and seeing how different things are, and what would we feel about the things in the past, this answered it, but we could find this more about for ourselves. And the music is really setting the tune. Though aimed towards children and general audiences, it got really ballsy with the music choices and the use of 60s Motown music and 70s rock that a child at the time may not have understood but would have gladly accepted it as it was the, as it was the creator's envision since they grew up in those times and introduced me to most of my favorite tracks, including Dancing in the Street which has been covered throughout the years and the mainstay music video done in a relatively 2000s era pop style that I enjoyed much with its more frenetic energy as well as Green Tambourine by the late Robert Goulet which is a music video in its own right and served as the end title credits theme for this in a flower power theme in the pivotal flashback part. The music really sells on what the creatives wanted for this. Boy, that was some wild ride in this lengthy video essay. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope I have interpreted the themes as I presented in a concise manner as I aim to make more. You know the deal as I sign off now. Like, sub, and share, and I'll see y'all real soon. Howdy, howdy, ho, ho, ho. Before we start the video, just wanted to say thanks for the recent subscribers as we finally made it past 500. As I aim to do more video essays and retrospectives as I can, because I genuinely love this format of work, I aim to lead to give you as much insight and perspective as I can on the topic that matters mostly in creativity. Also, I'm in the process of resetting my Patreon and Ko-Fi, so please wait till I have it all completed. So with that out of the way, let's begin. The hardest thing to go through in life is growing up, mostly in a world we think we should be prepared for. I find myself indicative in the present more and more as more of our age are feeling relatively burnt out in the world as it is in this day and age, and how we tend to yearn for the simplest days of our youth in a time we all thought was sacred, but just as more bad existed then and then some. But we look forward to in a time of uncertainty. 